Hey, it's Bree, and you're tuned in to another episode of Bonnet Talks. I'm done saying episode numbers because I've lost count. Now before we go ahead and jump into today's topic, if at any point throughout watching this video you think to yourself, damn, her lashes like they're absolutely popping where can i purchase some go ahead and click the link in my description box below for more information this video i'm actually really excited for um i have been getting a lot of good feedback for my story time where i told you guys like how i went to jail because lately the videos that i have been uploading have been brutally honest they don't give a fuck they don't i'm at a place in my life where i could literally care less what anybody thinks about me because my mind is just like laser focused on making my dreams come true and that's why this video is so important for me to film today because i feel like i am like an expert in self-doubt if anybody should be talking about self-doubt and like getting out of your own way it's me i am my biggest enemy nobody holds me back more than i hold me back so i feel like i have like significant insight on this topic but yeah it even came to my attention one day when i was going live with you guys that self-confidence and self-doubt is an issue that clearly i'm not the only person struggling with so if i can help you in any way possible even if it's coming on here and being transparent again and telling you guys or kind of like using myself as an example to not only give you a pep talk but to give myself one as well because i feel like i really really need it so just bear with me follow me through the motions because you know at the end i'm gonna make sense i am trying so hard to get out of this funk of why do i give myself to people that give me nothing in return i'm talking like best friends boyfriends i mean if you've been following me for a while you know that betrayal is like a common theme in my life it seems like i just keep giving to the wrong people and so finally like with this coronavirus i feel like well this coronavirus and a lot of the things in my life that was leading up to this coronavirus like getting kicked out of the strip club you know getting spit in the face by my ex-boyfriend just a lot of stuff has been leading me to this place where it's like okay i think all the energy that you've been putting into other people all the love that you've been looking to find in other people i think it's time for you to look within yourself which is kind of why i even feel confident to sit here and talk about this subject because you can't teach people anything if you're not struggling or going through it yourself i just kind of feel like i lost myself i honestly do with the whole situation about like you know my ex-boyfriend and i mean my breakup with my ex-boyfriend was just not it was not positive everybody has their like worst breakup oh it tore me and ripped me apart i'm kind of serious girl like that shit hurt me to the core and it really made me look at myself the people whose life i brighten up just by being myself these people are not getting their content because you're over here trying to play jedi mind tricks with somebody that clearly does not care about you right so like I said, hang in there because I'm going to tie it in and it's going to make such beautiful sense. I'm telling you. I was watching, no, I'm lying. I was watching Hell's Kitchen, but I do love MasterChef. Shout out to Gordon Ramsay. I was watching Hell's Kitchen and we're getting introduced to the characters. And this is a true story. We're getting introduced to the characters. I mean the characters. These are real people. We're getting introduced to the contestants okay within like the first three episodes of the season that i was watching there was like this recurring feeling that i had when the chefs were talking about themselves and i had to catch myself and i'm gonna be honest i started to feel like these people are too cocky and i had to catch myself and i'm happy that i did catch myself because i had a epiphany i had a realization that these people are not cocky these people are not arrogant. These people are confident in their skills and their ability. And they have the accomplishments to prove it. Like, they can back it up. They're not just talking about themselves. They can back it up. They have the skill set and they believe in their skill sets. Okay? Those episodes, this epiphany 
that I've had from something so simple as watching Hell's Kitchen has literally inspired the video that you clicked on today because what I've taken from Ben's watching Hell's Kitchen during this quarantine is that I need to get my confidence back. I need to get that confidence back that I had when I was a little girl where if somebody told me I was weird, I was just like okay and like when I was younger if someone told me that I was weird I don't even think I fully processed what weird meant because to, to me they was weird to me to me all they cared about was like dumb stuff like what boys thought of them so if I was weird I was cool being weird because I didn't base my entire identity off male validation so it kind of like when I was younger when people insulted me or tried to come for my confidence my energy was like, okay, well, the feeling's mutual. Like, you're weird to me, too. Like, I feel the exact same way. Only certain people could really, like, affect my self-confidence. And I'm going to keep it a buck with you. I feel like I have let the wrong people slip in between these cracks of my confidence. Like, say I have an Achilles heel, okay? I have let these the wrong people know my Achilles heel. People who I have trauma bonded with. This is me personally. If you can't relate, girl, let me know in the comments. But this is my experience. I have trauma bonded with like the wrong people. And then I kind of take the secrets that we keep between ourselves as a form of loyalty because that's just how I am. I feel like if I'm gonna keep your secret, I'm gonna die with that secret. But a lot of a lot of people, girl, I'm starting to realize that. The way that I move is very similar to like how old people move or like how Italian mobsters move. And that's not very common in our generation. And I've learned that and that's a whole nother video, okay? Thank you. So what we're talking about here today is I just kind of learned that because I've let the wrong people know too much about me, they have targeted my self-confidence in a way where it had me looking at myself different. Now, I don't want to give too much power to certain people because at the end of the day, self-confidence comes from self. It is my confidence. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, dating someone for so long who... On, and on top of that, just let's just say I never even met my ex-boyfriend. The best friends that I had were so toxic they did not believe in me they were so jealous of me and i just had a lot of people around me that would poke and prod my weak spots and there are not many but they were they would poke and prod those spots until they became bruises and open sores and yeah jackie Ina said it best what i'm trying to say jackie Ina said perfectly so i'm just gonna steal the quote from her mouth we are all born with confidence and then society and life kind of strips that away from us. And that's basically what I was trying to say. Like, I was raised to be very confident in who I am. I know, like, when I was growing up, and I don't even need to talk about who I used to be in the past because I'm pretty sure when I blow up, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to tell you about who I used to be and what I used to look like. So if you're ever wondering, damn, I wonder what she used to look like in high school. Pretty sure within two to three months, somebody's going to come out with some, this is what she used to look like. This is who she really is. So just know that I was not the baddest bitch in the bunch when I was growing up. And people made me constantly aware of that. And that's the beauty of growing up. You know what I'm saying? Like when you're younger Things that you're insecure about, you probably don't really have control over it. For instance, if people are making fun of you for how you dressed or how you used to wear your hair when you were growing up, you probably didn't really have control over that because you didn't have money. So now, like, my reputation, I get DMs from people from high school, oh my god, you're so fine now. I mean, you was always fine, but you really fine now. I mean, no, I wasn't. I wasn't always fine. I wasn't always fine because if that's the case, you would have talked to me when I was in high school and it was quiet. So, I appreciate the compliment, but, like, let's not overdo it. You know what I'm saying? I want to get on here and talk about self-doubt today because it seems like no matter what stage in life you're in, you're going to experience self-doubt. And nobody can live your life and nobody can do you like how you can do you okay and if it took 
episodes of Hell's Kitchen to get me to realize this, then it means the world to me that by the time you click off of this video, even if you don't watch it to the end, that it resonates within you. Either I want you to leave this video remembering who you are, like how I did, or getting in touch and getting a deeper understanding of who you are so you can love yourself accordingly. Step one to not doubting yourself is loving yourself. When you love yourself and you know who you are and you know your abilities and you know what you're good at and what you're not good at, you're not gonna be so hard on yourself when you fail or when you do fail, you're gonna you're gonna take it more as like a lesson. Like, I don't even see myself as failing no more. I see it as a lesson. Like, I can't lose. If nobody buys my product, if nobody follows me on Instagram, if I don't meet any of my goals, it's okay. It's okay because what can I learn? I'm gonna go back to the drawing board and I'm gonna do it again. Can't nobody stop me. That's another thing about self-doubt that I find to be so evil is that it takes away your own that your own drive that you have within you. One of the best compliments that people give me is that I get up and do stuff. I am a doer. I don't tell people about anything until it's already done. That is just like such a high compliment to me that if I died right now, people would be like, damn, like Brianna was really about that action. And I feel like self-doubt, it robs people of that opportunity. And that's why on a deeper, on a deeper, deeper scale, I really feel like self-doubt is the enemy. Let me put it to you like this. God knows who you are. He gave you your skill set. He gave you your dreams. Everything that he put in you, even if you could do hair, if you got enough patience to where you are so kind and sweet to where you could teach little kids, whatever your talent is, he gave it to you. And the enemy sees that. And he want to distract you, bitch. He want to distract you. He want to give you hard times in life. He want to give you bad relationships, terrible friends, a bad living situation where you go outside and you see violence and you see this and that. He wants you to feel trapped to where you never even find out your true potential and you live your life a stranger to yourself that's what the enemy wants you to feel like that's why i'm tired of beating around the bush and if you made it this far congratulations bitch this is the truth self-doubt is the enemy can't nobody do you like how you do you you are uniquely awesome this goes for me and you at the same damn time this dream i'm not sitting up here talking about the business and the dreams for no reason because I want you to buy it. I'm going to win. This is going to be successful regardless. What I'm trying to say is that dream was already mine. And then I go and then I spend all the money and then I'm standing there and I'm looking at the product and I'm like, well, is it for me? I mean, you spent X amount of dollars already. You better make it for you. I would literally be sitting in the house stressed about packaging just stressed out about stuff that's not even a big deal don't be like me do not be like me what is yours go and get it what is yours is for you nobody could take it all it could do is dwindle away i'm telling you please i you know i'm gonna put a receipts nurses were surveyed okay Nurses were surveyed. The most common thing that people say on their deathbed, the most common experience, the most common thing when people die is fuck, I lived my life for other people or fuck, I never got to chase my dream. Settling, don't settle. Self-doubt makes you settle. Self-doubt will have you on your deathbed, looking at your kids and your grandkids, happy that you was able to reproduce, but empty because you never chased that dream that God gave you in your spirit. And let me tell you something, I would rather drop dead right now from coronavirus knowing that I was in the beginning stages of building a platform and starting a business and getting it on my own than to wait for this coronavirus to be over and just, oh, well, let me go back to work. I would rather die than not see my dreams come true. I used to tell people when I was younger, I'm not going to die and not get on a private jet. I will get on a private jet before I die. That sounds like a shallow goal. But that's my goal. If I die before I got on a private jet, I didn't live to my full potential. Because it can't be that hard to get on a private jet. 
all you need is money. So at the end of the day, this video is me just coming here and being honest about my insecurities. It's like, I love to take a risk that could sabotage my health, my well-being, you know, something that could kill me. I would love that risk, but something that would you know, elevate my life, create generational wealth for my family. Oh, I'm scared of that. The devil is a lie. That's all I'm gonna say, y'all. The devil is a liar. I promise to make more videos like this because I feel like we both need to hear these messages. You need to stop doubting yourself because you never know when you're gonna get this opportunity again for the world to just be on pause for you to shine. The world is on pause, baby. They want to see you shine. Are you gonna give them what they want? Only you can offer what you offer. So what you braid? So what everybody else braid? Okay, well, the way you set up your Instagram is different from that other girl. That's why I want to go to you. I like the way you photograph your hairstyles. Everybody brings something unique. But when people doubt themselves, they eliminate themselves from the competition, which is kind of bittersweet. You know what I'm saying? How many people get the idea to start a YouTube channel a day and then they upload for a month and then they quit? Hey, more room for me. Self-doubt equals missed opportunities. You need to be extremely confident in what you bring to the table because you don't want to miss out any opportunity. Take what is yours. If it is for you, grab it. Don't let nobody tell you it's not for you. Don't let nobody get in your head. You, you see what I'm saying? That's why I didn't tell nobody about this business that I'm starting. I don't want people to tell me, just stick to YouTube. You do YouTube. Oh, so you want me to do YouTube and promote other people's businesses on my platform instead of promoting my own business and starting my own business and, and literally doing it like Madam C.J. Walker? So you don't want me to be like Madam C.J. Walker. I love you guys. I really, really do. These videos feel so good to my spirit because not only do they inspire me, but they, I know, I know that this is chicken noodle soup for the soul. I know that somebody out there is going to receive this message and whoever it is, I love you. I believe in you. We are on this journey together. That's why I'm so real with you because I need you to know that I am not a perfect person and I'm about to make all my dreams come true. And anybody who want to stop me, they just gonna have to go against God because I don't have time. I'm trying to get this money. If you guys like this video, go ahead and turn that thumbs up blue. Get those fingers moving in the comments below and let me know what you guys want to see from me next. And with that being said, I really do love you guys so fucking much. And I'll see you in the next video. Till next time.